So today we're going to look at part one of knowers and knowing. And I like to throw in some quotations during presentations. So the familiar is not understood simply because it's familiar. So when I say to you, what's your world view? What is that? Before I even bring up the next slide, what, what do I mean by that? Because right away we just looked at language a little bit and where you fall on a spectrum. So when I said the words of world view, how many people of you in your mind just pictured the globe? Like just saw a picture of the globe in your mind and started thinking about like the shape of North America. A few of you? When I said world view, how many of you went to things like beliefs and sort of what you believe in and what you value? Like it was more like a beliefs and values thing. Okay. So right away, we had a difference between like an optical worldview versus like a sort of personal worldview. Okay. And so that's the, the question, right? When you ask people, what's your worldview, people interpret the questions different ways. Some think of it emotionally, some think of it historically, economically. But a lot of people pure, do it purely optically. In other words, how they see the world. Okay? And that often brings up that idea of a map or a globe in your mind. And the traditional view that North Americans hold when I say, well, how does the world look, is known as the Mercantor Projection. And you may have learned this in geography or history. But the Mercantor Projection looks like this. And this is the world view that a lot of us have been taught because it was pre presented to us as this world view from a purely optical point of view. Okay? But you may or may not know that this is a, actually a really bad optical view of the world. It is highly distorted. Okay? It is highly distorted because it tries to place a sphere on a flat plane, which doesn't actually work. It distorts land masses. Greenland looks the same size as Africa, but in reality, it's actually 14 times bigger. It's culturally biased because it puts North America at the top. Who's to say what the top of the world actually is? We can define two poles, and we call them North and South, but does that really mean top? There's no real meaning to that. So here's another one. This is called the Hobo Dyer projection. Imagine this is the worldview you were taught. This is the world. This is Australia. This is Canada right here. This is us, right there. That could be your worldview. You could have easily been taught that as your worldview right there. Notice, what, what are some of the striking differences you notice right away? What, right, other than, you know, like, the upside down, it seems upside down. But what else seems really distorted? What do you think? Anyone? Just, just say it out loud. The Pacific Ocean? Asia? In what way do they look different? Bigger? Smaller? Right? I mean, does the, even the size of Australia look different? Does the size of the United States look different? Yeah. This is a way you could have been taught your worldview. You could have this map or this globe sitting in your living room or in your geography class right now. And do you think that might affect the way you claim knowledge? It, it might, right? Worldview, if we p view it purely optically, could affect the way you know things, right? So in a sense, maps are something we do mentally. And mental maps can distort your reality. And your reality can come from a variety of mental maps. Your experience, your teachers, the books you read, the media that you absorb. Okay? And you don't have time to go to every single piece that you absorb and go, you know what? What about this worldview? What about that? You know, when you first were presented that map, you probably didn't challenge your teacher and say, well, wait a minute, why is North America at the top? Why couldn't it be at the bottom? And your teacher probably would have responded with, well, it's because it's near the North Pole. Yeah, but why is north at the top? Top is only a relevant term to the position that you're in now, like up. Up is relevant to down, which is where you're placing it on that sort of spectrum. So a lot of this then is affected by culture and custom and conventions. So if you ask someone from England, who's the greatest writer and the greatest scientist of all time? They might answer Shakespeare and Newton. But if you ask someone from Italy, they might say Dante. 
and Galileo. And if you ask someone from a different culture, they might place two other people on there, right? So their mental map of knowledge is certainly influenced by their culture. And the word map itself, in order for it to be a map, it has to be imperfect. There is no such thing as a perfect map of the world because that's impossible. So in order to become a map, it has to become imperfect. This relates to a painting maybe some of you have seen. I'm going to have you, the French students in here, translate that for me. What does that say in English? This, this right there, what does that say? This is not a pipe. And that's a painting. What does it mean? Why, why, is it, why is the painting not, why is it not a pipe? Because it's a painting. That's one interpretation. A painting of a pipe. It's not a pipe. Right? It has that meaning that we kind of want to dig a little bit deeper in. Right? And the title of the painting, by the way, is called The Betrayal of Images. For it to become an image, it had to become imperfect. Right? Like the map. What men really want is not knowledge, but certainty. That's Bertrand Russell. Um, so what is certainty? Well, certainty also is a very difficult term to come across, right? If our mental maps are flawed, maybe we should basically abandon that as a concept and just limit our lives to things that are certain. We go like, okay, I know the map is imperfect, so I'm just going to focus on things that I know are certain. But as we just learned, certainty is different than belief. Okay? There's a difference between when you're certain of something or whether you just believe it to be true. So when you critically look at something and say, you know what, you know it, you have to really kind of break that down further. Okay? So here's four statements. I know Seattle Seahawks won the Super Bowl in 2014. I know strawberries are red. I know that if A is bigger than B and B is bigger than C, then A is bigger than C. And I know murder is wrong. Now, you might agree that some of those above statements are true because of various reasons. You might agree. You might disagree as well. But you might say, you know what, I agree. That's a true statement. But then if I asked you why, you might make claims like this. You might say, well, I know it because I read it in the newspaper. That's how I know Seattle won the Super Bowl. Um, how do I know strawberries are red? Well, I've seen. All strawberries I've ever seen are red. I can see it. How do I know that A is bigger than C? Well, based on what you told me here, I figured it out logically. Even though I have no idea what A, B, and C are, it doesn't matter. I use my logic and my reason to determine that that's a true statement. And lastly, I know murder isn't wrong because it's intuitively obvious. I just know it. It's a bad thing. Murder, murder is bad and therefore wrong. This relates to where we kind of left off last time. The ways you know things relate to these basic four concepts. And now, with your new curriculum, expands out to eight concepts. But the concepts of sense perception, which is covered in number two there. The concept of language, covered in number one. The concept of reasoning and logic, covered in number three. And number four, emotion. Okay? Now, very few of those, though, lead a lot of people to 100% certainty, right? 100% certainty is, in some ways, a concept, not a reality. People make that claim. They say, you know what? I'm 100%, I'm 110% certain that that's the case. How many of you will claim 100% certainty that Seattle won the Super Bowl? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it's not, that's not a majority in here. Yet it seems so intuitively obvious. It just happened. Now, you said you didn't want to admit it. Why? That's actually an interesting question, I think. OK. So what's preventing you from making that statement? Is it because you didn't read it? Is it because you didn't see it? Is it because your logic is flawed? Or is it an emotional decision you're making? It's an emotion. Do we feel for him and his emotion? Should we give them a group awe? No. <laughs> um, so certainty is, in a lot of ways, a concept. Like very much like in your math classes when you say pi, right? It's a concept. It's not a real number. It's a conceptual number. 
And that's kind of a tricky one too. Or infinity. Infinity isn't a place. It isn't a destination to get to. It's a concept, right? There's a famous quote that says, we tend to think large numbers are closer to infinity. Like, you know, a billion is closer to infinity than five. But in reality, a billion is still infinitely far away from infinity. Just like five is infinitely far away from infinity. And that's kind of one of those philosophical things. It's like, what? That doesn't make sense. But certainty is like that. You can never be 100% certain, perhaps, that this is a door. I bet you all saw the matrix. You could be plugged in right now to the matrix, and this isn't really a door. You could be a brain in a jar sitting in a laboratory somewhere, and I'm feeding information into your brain right now that says that's a door and that guy's walks. Can you be certain that's not true? It depends how you define certainty. For some of us, our definition of certainty is in the realm of, of sort of what, what, how we can define it. And for others, they can go, you know what, you're right, Walks. We can never be certain. Those are in the realm of philosophy that I don't want to get too far into. But it tells us that we have to kind of be concrete about our terminology here. All men have opinions, but very few think. So this is what the course content will break down in terms of units, the ways of knowing. So the four ways of knowing, language, enables us to acquire knowledge from other people. That's what we use language for. We use language to get knowledge from others through spoken language, through written language, and other forms of language. And we have learned a great many things through that. But we have to also question the source of the knowledge that we're getting. And authority is often quoted as the source. Well, I know that because he told me. And I know he's, a, he's reliable because he's a... He's my dad, and he's a scientist, and he's the prime minister, or whatever. The so-called experts, but they get it wrong sometimes. So one of the questions you can do with knowledge is, one could say that the Super Bowl was staged. We could question that. You probably want to question that, right? You know what? They just they, they faked it on purpose. That's, that's why they lost. They're actually the better team, but they just faked it, right? That often comes up in things like boxing matches. Boxing matches have infamously been um, thrown or staged and stuff like that. Or professional wrestling and stuff like that, right? Um, perception. We base our knowledge on what we can draw in through our senses, our five senses. But what if you're colorblind? Right? What if you're colorblind? You might not have agreed that strawberries are red. For example, let's take a look at this. Here's square A. Here's square B. Please, everyone, take a look at square A, square B. Did you know they're the same color? They are. There's a bridge between them to prove that to you. Those two squares are the same color. Now, when I back up to here, you may not have believed me. Everything in your visual perception right now might be trying its best to prove to yourself that A and B are the same color, but you can't. And now you can. Those two are the same color. And that's just one example of where our perception is starting to be something we can question, right? Are these things, in fact, the same color? Am what I see happening exactly is what's happening. Did I just really hear that? Oh my gosh, what is that smell? Well, maybe that's not the best example, but those are the kinds of things where we can question that. Now, what about reason? Philosophers might claim that reason is the thing. It's the way to know things. That that's the one you can't break. That reason is infallible. Okay? But, again, there are questions in that. Okay, let's assume some des dentists are drinkers. Okay? And let's assume that nobody who rides a bike is a drinker, like a bat, like a drunk. Does it follow that some cyclists are dentists? Well, the answer is no, it does not. But for some of us, we might struggle with the logic behind that, which tells us that if we can make mistakes in logic, maybe we can't trust our reason sometimes. That reason itself can have some faults in it. And the last way is emotion. 
that sometimes we can base our stuff on gut feelings. And usually students tend to draw that one in as unreliable, that our emotion seems to be an unreliable thing. You can't trust your emotion. But this, again, is something, again, that you may want to think about. What is intuitively obvious to one person may not be intuitively other to another. Like when I said murder is wrong, I bet you very few of you disagreed with that. And if you did, well, I might have a little bit of questions for you after the fact, and I might be a little bit worried. Um, but let's, let's use a more extreme example than murder. Cannibalism. Is that wrong? Right? No, don't, no, don't answer. I'm, just, I'm not going to question your beliefs here or anything. But for some, they would say, you know what? We all believe that. We all believe it's wrong. But the reality is emotion and things like that aren't necessarily all in the realm of shared knowledge, right? We don't all necessarily feel the same way about certain things. So there are questions there. All right, and that concludes my presentation on the four basic ways of knowing. Now, we are going to spend more time studying these as units